Hey everyone, Mr. Macintosh here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Mac OS Sequoia on your unsupported Mac with OpenCore Legacy Patcher. This will allow you to breathe new life into your older Mac to be able to install newer applications and keep your Mac secure with the latest security updates. This video is designed to be an easy, quick walkthrough that anybody can follow. Let's do it together and jump in and get started. As I mentioned in the intro, this is designed to be a quick and easy get the job done guide. If you run into any trouble or you have additional questions, that's what my second video is gonna be, a long format detailed guide that goes over everything, all the different questions and troubleshooting that you might need if you're making the jump because a lot of things have changed with Mac OS Sequoia and the patcher this year, but that's just too much to go over in this quick video. I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner and in the description of that video. Step one before we go any further is make sure you back up all your data on your Mac with either Time Machine or plugging in an external hard drive or USB drive. Step two is to make sure that you install the latest version supported on your unsupported Mac before installing OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Step three is we're going to need a USB flash drive or an external hard drive to create a Mac OS Sequoia installer. I recommend at least 32 gigabytes to start. Step four is to download the OpenCore Legacy Patcher application to your unsupported Mac. Our demonstration Mac for this video is a 2013 Mac Pro and I'm doing that so I can show you on a large screen and be able to show you the ports and plugging in the drive so you can follow along at every single step. All we need to do is click on GitHub and it'll open up a new tab. All you need to do is scroll down and look for the releases section over here. Click on this for the latest version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. You'll be brought to the next release page that shows all of the information that you need to know about this release before making the jump to the new version, including patch notes or any kind of information that you might need to know before installing on your Mac. All you need to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom to the assets section right here and you should see all the files. OpenCore-Patcher dot pkg. Click on this to start the download. Here we go. It's now downloaded in your downloads folder. Step five is open up your downloads folder and we want to install the open core package onto our hard drive. We'll double click and we'll click continue, install, we'll type in our password, enter, and there is the installation. It'll install the application, click on close and keep. Step six is to open up open core legacy patcher. This is the main menu for OpenCore Legacy Patcher, and the one section that we're going to be working on right now is Create Mac OS Installer. So let's click on that now, and then we are going to download the Mac OS Installer, the latest version. If you have the installer already, you can click on this and navigate it to skip this step, but we're going to download the Mac OS Installer. All the available updates available, and here's Mac OS Sequoia, the latest version available. We're going to click Download, and there it goes. We'll pick up as soon as it's done downloading. Okay, we're just about done downloading here. All right, now the OpenCore Legacy Patcher application is going to verify the installer just to make sure it doesn't find any problems before the Create Install Media starts. Okay, now it's gonna instruct the installer, get our USB flash drive or hard drive out to be able to erase this entire drive to be able to create the Mac OS Sequoia OpenCore Legacy Patcher installer on there. So let's plug that in now. We'll give it a second it should read and then launch onto the desktop and there it did now we will continue to create the mac os installer click on yes now it's going to ask you to select the installer we already downloaded sequoia we're going to select that and it's going to say which disk are you going to use we're going to use our usb flash drive let's click on that and one final warning about all the data on this usb drive will be erased we'll click on yes and there we go it's going to start creating the installer and this thing's flying. This is a very fast drive and this should be done in no time. The installer is created. The patcher is going to validate the installer integrity and we'll give it a second or two to let this finish. Okay, step eight is to install the open core bootloader to our EFI partition on our USB flash drive. Let's click on yes. It's gonna build all the features for our Mac Pro. We're going to click install the disk. This is the list that it gives us. This is our internal drive, disk zero. We're not gonna do that. We're doing it on our USB drive, disk three, and then our EFI on that USB drive. And now we have our reboot to apply. Okay, step nine, we're ready to reboot to our USB drive to be able to begin the installation process of Mac OS Sequoia. Click on reboot and get ready to hold down the option key on your keyboard so we can boot to the new bootloader. Click on reboot and restart. 
Now we're going to hold down the option key on our keyboard so we can see the boot selection menu. And there's our main menu. We're going to move over to the EFI boot and we can click the arrow, continue holding option, and then arrow over again or use your mouse to be able to select install macOS Sequoia. And now we're going to boot into the macOS Sequoia installer from our USB drive. Okay, now that we're in the macOS Sequoia installer, we need to decide whether we're going to do a upgrade in place or we're going to do a fresh erase and install. I recommend a fresh erase and install, but you can try the upgrade. So step 11, I'll show you how to do the upgrade. Now skip to step 12 if you want to be able to do the erase and install. Okay, so step 11, we're going to do the upgrade in place, meaning that all of our applications and files will still be there. We'll click on install Mac with Sequoia and click on continue and then continue. Click agree, click Macintosh hard drive and then click continue and that'll start the upgrade process. Okay, step 11 was if you wanted to do an upgrade in place, but step 12 will be a fresh erase and install of your entire drive and install a new fresh copy of Mac with Sequoia. So now all we need to do is click on Disk Utility and click on Continue. Now we'll see our internal drive here in Macintosh hard drive or whatever you named it before. This is what we're going to erase. We'll click Erase here and this is one final warning to back up all your data because this is an erase entire hard drive and reinstall Mac with Sequoia fresh. Click on Erase. and click on done. Now we need to click disk utility and quit. Go back to install Mac with Sequoia, click continue. Click on continue again. Agree, agree, Macintosh hard drive and then click on continue. And there we go. And then we'll be right back after that's done. Okay, we have our first reboot. It's automatically selecting the Mac OS installer and going to the next step of the installation. About 29 minutes remaining, we're going to let that go and we'll pick up on the next part. Okay, we got our second reboot here. Automatically booting to the installer of the second phase. Okay, we got our third reboot. Now you can see the macOS installer is gone and it's now booting to the main boot drive. Now so here's our fourth reboot and right to the boot drive again. Now this part here is the Open Core Legacy Patcher automatic patching system putting the graphics and drivers in so the setup assistant can be accelerated so you don't have really slow movement with the mouse going through the setup assistant to create your account and stuff. So we'll wait for that to finish. Okay, we're just about complete. Okay, we got our fifth and final reboot. And here we are, the Mac OS Sequoia installation has finished. Step 13 is basically going to be walking through all these menus to set up our account for the first time. And when we're done with that, we're going to be on the desktop. Now we're at step 14. Welcome to the Mac. We have our account created. We're going to click on continue to load to the desktop. The Open Core Legacy Patcher application should load up in the background and show us that we have to be able to change our boot disk from the USB drive to installing it onto our main hard drive. This will allow us to now boot without our USB drive plugged in. So we want to install OpenCore to our internal hard drive on our Mac Pro, then we'll be able to disconnect and unplug our installer disk. Let's click on OK. And it's going to build the configuration again like we saw in the beginning. But this time we're going to install it to our internal hard drive. And now our internal hard drive is disk zero. The blue selection shows what you're currently booted to, which is our USB drive. We're going to click disk zero and then EFI. Now I mounted the EFI, installing the files to the partition, and then it's going to unmount. There it is. Now we can reboot and then we have to hold down the option key to select our new boot drive. So before we do that though, we're going to right click and eject to eject our USB and we're going to remove our USB drive from our Mac Pro. Now it's unplugged. Okay, step 15, we're going to reboot and we're going to select our internal hard drive as the OpenCore Legacy Patcher default boot disk. So we're gonna click on reboot and restart and we're gonna hold down the option key as soon as it restarts. Okay, we're gonna hold down option now. We have our USB drive unplugged. Now we're going to select EFI boot. You can either use your mouse to select it or just hit enter. 
our default hard drive is now Sequoia. We can just hit enter. Now it's going to boot off of the hard drive and you don't have to do anything. It's going to boot up as soon as you start up the machine. It's going to boot right to Mac OS Sequoia without any other drives or anything like that. All right, let's log in. Okay, step 16, we gotta do something really important. We have to go into system settings and we have to go into general and then software update. And then we have to turn off download new updates when available. So we'll click on that and we're gonna type in our password and now click on done. This is important because we don't want major OS versions or security updates downloading if it is problematic. You can come in here and you can control this now and verify on the Open Core Legacy Patch or GitHub to make sure there's no problems with the update before you update to it. And I put up update videos to make sure everything's running okay so you can make that decision to make the jump or not. The next thing we wanna do is put the Open Core Legacy Patcher application into our dock. So click on O in the applications. We're gonna drag it down here on the other side by the trash can or the recycling bin, and that's the alias. We'll click on that to open it up. And once it's open, we can actually drag this one to the dock anywhere where we want. Okay, the final step 17 is to make sure that we have all the patches installed properly. We want to click on post install root patch and it's going to check for the patches and we are good to go. If there was anything listed here, that means that something maybe was missed, but it tells us a 2.0.1 September 16, 2024 and we are good to go on Mac OS Sequoia on our unsupported Mac. And that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you have any issues or want any further information, make sure you check out my more detailed Mac OS Sequoia Unsupported Max video. Make sure you check out the Open Collective for Open Core Legacy Patcher and my Patreon if you'd like to support me in this channel. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.